the seventh and final learning objective uh, for session number seven uh, is determinants of bond yields. What determines the yield on a bond? Again, essentially the Fisher effect, and it is reflected in the term structure. So within the bond uh, yield, there is a real return, an inflationary return, and that little RH thing that we don't want to forget about, the uh, interest rate risk component. So three different components in this term, what we'll call a term structure of interest rates, relationship between uh, total interest rates on default, free, pure, discount securities, and TTM. So on the y-axis, you're going to have uh, rates, and on the x-axis, you're going to have time to maturity. And you would expect, one would expect this term structure most times to be upwardly sloping because we would expect uh, lower rates for shorter term bond instruments, and we would expect a little bit more uh, pay for some of that interest rate risk going forward out and, and, and some inflation protection out into the future. So if we look at the term structure, most times you look at it and you will see it to be upward sloping. And you'd see it's comprised of a real rate, an inflation premium, and an interest rate risk premium. Uh, longer term rates, typically greater than short term rates in this upward sloping. Very occasionally when interest rates are an indicator interest rates might be headed downward, you'll very, very rarely see this term structured slope downward. Um, so in this case, short term rates are paying more than long term rates. And again, I think I've seen that maybe two or three times in my financial career, not, not very, very often. Uh, three components, real rate of interest, little r, compensation we demand for uh, the use of our money, um, also an inflationary component, so the portion of uh, the total interest rate that represents compensation for expected future inflation. And finally, that little RH component, we want some interest rate risk compensation. And that's what makes up the term structure. Uh, this is simulated by, uh, that's a simulation of the Treasury yield curve, which is a plot of yields on Treasury uh, notes and bonds relative to maturity. Again, typ typically upward sloping. I've seen it again. Uh, a couple of times downward sloping, uh, appears in the Wall Street Journal daily, pretty much on a daily basis. And this reflects the term structure of interest rates. And typically, uh, shorter term rates are lower than longer term rates because we want payment for those three components that are reflected in the uh, term structure. Uh, determinants of bond yield. What make up bond yield? Well, if we have a corporate bond, we have some extra compensation we require or desire. We want default risk premium. So uh, we want a part of our total interest rate to be comprised of extra compensation for the possibility of default on the bond. So a corporation might default on it if they go bankrupt and cannot pay. Uh, they run through a difficult stretch financially. They may, uh, we want some protection from that in the form of a default risk premium. We also want a taxability premium. Corporate bonds are taxable. And so we want a little bit extra in the return to help us compensate for that taxability requirement. And also liquidity premium. Bonds are not always liquid, not always sold every day uh, for that particular corporation. So we want a little bit of liquidity premium, pay us a little bit extra for that um, impact. In summary, then, we've gone through uh, seven learning objectives in session seven, seven for seven. Uh, we've talked, at this point, you should be able to understand what a bond is and understand the bond formula and how to value a bond. Very simple. It's one formula. Can't go wrong. Uh, learning objective two, what are some features of bonds? How are bonds uh, different? Uh, what are some of the terminology, some of the unique terminology of bonds? So we have to understand the language, and you should understand some of the language now uh, of bonds and how they work and, uh, and different features of them. Um, learning objective number three, were bond ratings. We have rating agencies that rate these bonds to help protect us, we the investor. Uh, types of bonds were called out in, in uh, learning objective number uh, four. Uh, different types of bonds out there, income bonds and zero coupon bonds and uh, put bonds and call bonds and callable bonds and uh, just a whole list, government bonds, municipal bonds, treasury bonds, treasury bonds and notes, corporate bonds and so on. So lots of different types of bonds and some rarer forms. I haven't even mentioned cat bonds and so on, liquid yield option notes I mentioned briefly. Uh, learn what these bond types are and uh, grow with them. Uh, now you know the basics. Uh, bond markets, we should know now uh, because of learning objective number five, where do you buy a bond? Essentially through an investment bank or through the U.S. Treasury.
Uh, we call that the Fisher effect in uh, learning objective number six. You should know the Fisher effect for now, for life, and know the impact it will have on you uh, during your life. Pay careful attention to interest rates, especially if you own bonds. And finally, what determines bond yields? Essentially, it's the Fisher effect, R plus H plus RH. We hope you enjoyed uh, this session on bonds and bond valuation.